Hello, welcome to our collector corner of Monkey TV. Let's I'll just welcome everybody. Got Tammy, Linda, and hi, Richard. Everyone. So hi, hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so we're going to talk about collectibles today. And uh, we've got a bit of a mixture here of collectibles because we all come from different aspects. Maybe we'll start first, uh, Tammy, just saying how yep. long you've been a fan and where you started from. Yeah, sure. So I think it was I was about 10 years of age. Anyone growing up in Sydney in the mid-80s, you had the Harry and Ralph show of a Sunday morning. Big cartoons. And they're hosted by Miss Moira that now does the infomercials for the morning show. And Harry and Ralph were two characters, a cartoon strips of the Sunday Telegraph, and they had their own show of a Sunday morning. Cartoons, games, all that. And the last half hour would be an episode of The Monkees. So I started from there, found a couple of 45s in my mum's record collection, and it kind oh, of all lucky. just, it very lucky, and it just all snowballed from there. So it's been a, gosh, at least 30-odd okay, well. years now. Now, Linda, your turn. Oh, I'm a Cradle fan um, because I can't remember. <laughs> I, uh, I can't remember not having the monkeys in my life. I, w I am told that um, when they were in first run, I would sit on the floor and bang on the floor saying, Mickey, Mickey, Mickey. I still do that, you know. But, I was going to say um, you still do. <laughs> I still do that. Um, and, I, and I remember um, when I was little, um, we, we, we used to go to a lot of garage sales and yard sales and flea markets, and I would scour for monkeys stuff. And that's where I got most of my albums. Um, so I always got Cole Jim's albums. Um, and I remember buying Who's Got the Button um, for 50 cents. I think I was about eight years old and I only had 50 cents and the lady wanted 75 cents and she wouldn't give it up for 50 cents. And eventually my mother came up and bantered with the woman because I was so desperate not to leave that book sitting at that garage sale. <laughs> um, so yeah, forever. Um, for as long as they've been around, I've been around. Hi, Hello. Linda. We've just adding another Linda. Linda. Hello. Hello, welcome. Hello. Sorry, it took a while Welcome. to get organised. That's all right. We all, we all, you know, takes a little bit. Now, Richard, we're, Linda, we're just going into everybody's turns to say how they started. So next is Richard and how you became, when did you become collecting <clears throat> monkey stuff? When did I become a fan or when did I start collecting, yeah. sorry? Either way, yeah. Sorry, um, yes, when did you become interested in the monkeys? Yeah, it was um, 1977. Around about September, October on Channel 7, I came in from school and they're on TV. And I was just watching the show because, you know, they had the other shows like Gilligan's Island, Def Troop, all that kind of stuff. And um, so, yeah, just, just turned the TV on and they were on there. And I'm thinking, who are these crazy guys, you know? And and then my mum walked into the lounge room and she says, uh, I said, are these guys new? And she said, no, no do you realise, like, they're 10 years old? I went, really? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah like then i started watching some more episodes and then started getting hooked i started getting the record out recording the songs off the tv um trying to look for records and then the only thing i found was the greatest hits obviously at that time i think a lot of people was the only album they could find i went to all the record stores i guess and, and the guys would say oh no they're all been deleted you know since the um early 70s and and that yeah and then i just Started from there, just collected pictures and whatever I could find at the time. So, but okay. yeah, she sure has. <laughs> it's been yeah. a long journey though, but it's, she's, oh, it uh, has. It's, uh, it's Your certainly grown amazing now. Sorry? Yeah. Your collection's amazing now. And if you just like to leave that key to your house just outside <laughs> my door, that'd work for me. <laughs> but, the th but the thing is now though, too, that I've, um, I'm not really into the, into the like, like Ari's got a lot of toys, a lot of mm. you know that kind of thing, like that toys collectibles, that kind of. Thing. I'm more into the books, magazines, uh, record mainly records now, just all that kind of thing. Sort of the media type side of stuff, side of things, yeah. Like rare Japanese, rare European postcards, you name it, that, that kind of thing, yeah. 
And so, because when you start getting into a lot of like lunch boxes and blah blah blah, it gets really really pricey. And you know, I, I did have a, a bit of a collection way back then, and then I sold some of it off and bits and pieces to you guys. And so, oh, I know we've all been very appreciative of your <laughs> yes, uh, very grateful, very thankful. <laughs> I've got a few more surprises up. I've got a few more surprises up my sleeve when we have this convention. I'll, I'll probably have, you know bring some stuff down to hand out, or you know, yeah. <laughs> go through it. Now, Linda, thank you for joining us. Uh, Linda, thank you, Reed. Uh, now, yeah. what is your background with the monkeys? Um, on a Friday night, I used to go around to my cousin's house, and we would sit and play. Um, predominantly monkeys records on her record player and it just grew from there um, well, that's fabulous yeah uh, always remember my auntie having Davy's album and playing that while she used to do the housework um, I have got records but I prefer I'm chasing the original merchandise, which is extremely hard to get over here. Oh, it is special. Oh, it is. It is. You don't very, see it. Very hard. Very, yeah, it's never been that cheap. Well, mm. I'll give you my, uh, I started collecting in 76. And like anything, I think I got interested in it because not only did I love them, but they were so hard to find. So it was like a treasure hunt. Mm. And I got a lot of my, my, I had the one album for many years, and that was the Monkey's Greatest Hits. My best friend at the time had Barrel Full of Monkeys, so I played that every time I was at her house. I think I'm sure they got sick of that, but uh, I eventually got my own copy of it. And then when Monkey Mania came out, it's sort of like the floodgates opened, because around the same time, a lot of the records started hitting collector stores here in Melbourne. And we started because prior to that, I'd been looking at different places and I could never find anything. Suddenly it came. Uh, a lot of my collections from overseas initially because I went to a convention in Chicago in 84, brought back lots of stuff, including the Presents album, which was never released in Australia. And I've gone from there. So, but most, I have to say, I probably spent more money traveling and seeing shows. So that's where most of my money's gone. And I've seen over 150 concerts. So uh, I made up for it. I mean, when I, thinking in the 70s, I missed it all. I made up for it well and truly. And uh, that's, that's the best thing is the memories and lots of photos and that type of thing. So who wants to go first and show us some of their collection? I've got some photos that people want to, when they do it, do you want to start, uh, Tammy? I can yeah, bring up. Sure. I'll bring up one of. The, oh, have you got something there at the time, or do you want me to bring up some photos? That you well, sent the first thing I got is one of the things that I was happy to find. Most of my stuff I found in the late eighties, early nineties was a little bit easier than it is now. So this is a CD single of Daydream Believer from Japan that I was really thrilled to find. Back when I lived in Sydney, I'm now on the Gold Coast, I spent my time between record fairs at Parramatta Town Hall and there was a store that's still in Sydney called Red Eye Records and Glen A. Baker's oh. Time Warp. So that's where I yeah. found most things. Yeah. So this is just how tiny that was. I was so thrilled when I first found that. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So also, Love the too. Yeah. Got, I think I've got some, some of your photos. Yeah, let's see. I'll just <clears throat> okay. I'll get one of the photos while you can keep. If you want to show, I'll just yeah, sure. I think you've got your car here, so oh, I'll yes. just share the screen. So the car I got about five years ago off eBay. The poor thing has definitely seen better days. Okay, now, I'll just I'm, bring it up. Now, the thing is, I'm similar to you, Linda Reed, because, well, finding any fig monkeys in Australia, I'll go for it. But I love the original merchandise. And I had some friends when I first got the car saying, you paid how much for that because of its condition? But what I love is, I love if it could talk. I know it sounds crazy. It sounds like a Disney movie. But if it could tell the story of when it was somebody's first birthday present gift or a Christmas gift, how it got into some little child's hands in the 60s and made its way to me because it was definitely well played with. And that's what I love about a lot of the original merchandise. 
So that's my monkey mobile. That yes, I'd love one in perfect condition, but I'm the story behind this. I would love to know. That's metal like Hot Wheel material kind of thing. Yep. it's not plastic, good old, is it? No, no, good old corgi. Cool. <laughs> so yes, and I think one of them's missing. There's only three of them in there. I can never work out. I think Mike's in there, but I can't work out who's missing. If not the is, along those it's lines as well, it is <laughs> along the similar lines. Like this is just a standard copy of headquarters, an Australian copy, stereo. But the other thing I love when I find records is when you see someone else's name on the back. So I don't know if you can get I've that. Got a couple, I've got a few. <laughs> I've got a few of that. I'm not very it? good at this. But who, if anybody knows Keith Turner, who lived in San Susi, I ended up with your copy of headquarters. I don't know when you first bought it, but I've now got it. And I love when I find albums and 45s that have got people's names on it as well. See, that's where we differ. I would be like, please don't write on your stuff. <laughs> I used to. A lot of the stuff I bought as a teenager has my name on it and the date I've bought it. And now I think, why did I do that? But well, everything I bought back then, I can tell you what date it was bought. That's cool. I would rather yeah. stick it on a piece of paper in it, near it. <laughs> Don't nowadays, anyway. What's that, that one? Been, you know that. You've got one as well with someone's yeah. name on it. Trying to trying to zoom in there. Hang on. It's too shiny. Oh yeah. Oh, Jeff. Someone signed their name on it. They've autographed Jeff, their album. What does it say? Jeff something. Oh, that's better. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a few. I've got a couple of albums like that, but yeah. It's just. It would knowing, be really you know, neat to find those people. Yeah. So where are they now? We should look yeah, them cool. up on Facebook. But <laughs> I'm yeah, sorry. I'm, not, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not giving your album back, Keith. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's been in my collection for some time, but it's in safe hands. <laughs> now, along those lines, another copy of Headquarters. I know it's not very rare now, but when I found this at a record fair in the early 90s, I was so thrilled because it's the original bid cover. Cool. Yeah. And I don't think that they're that rare now, but back in the time, I was thrilled when they had that at the record fair and I couldn't go home without it. That's like the um, Papa Jean's Blues. The yes. first time I ever saw it, I didn't even know that there was an error like that. I picked up the album for $2 and I was so excited. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know anybody else who knew about it or saw it or whatnot. And then eventually I see them all over the place, you know, or online I see people have them all over the place. I'm like, oh, how disappointing. It's not rare anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but you're still so thrilled to have it in your collection. Oh, yeah. Anything different is always a thrill for collectors, isn't it? Exactly what's right. Your, what's your favorite rare thing, Anne? Oh, I'll bring it up. I'm just having a look at it. I'm just bringing up my screen. I've got a few things. So what I did, I decided to come up with something on a year. And it's 1987, and I'll bring up the picture. Sorry, I've just realized I forgot to load a picture for myself. So it won't be a moment. If Richard, do you want to do some... And I'll come back to my picture in a sec. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, where do I start? <laughs> your favorite, your favorite piece. Oh, well, I've got many of them. Now. That's the thing. <laughs> I've got so much. Yeah, you, you have to choose between the children, Richard. You know. <laughs> well, I find, I, I've got a lot of Japanese books, and I find this one quite quite intriguing. You might see it once and once or twice. Uh, on eBay, which is very rare, or on the Japanese sites, but it's, I don't know if you can see it or not. Oh, wow. We've lost Linda. Oh, it's just, uh, oh it's just, wow. That's how, hang on, where's the camera? That's how thick it is. Wow. And it's just, um, it's just, it's full of uh, just black and white pictures and stuff like that. Like, I'm trying to get behind with the camera here. <laughs> You're all, it's all blurry. Oh, there we are. But that, that looks really cool. I've never seen that before. It's got a little, um, it's got like a little, what do you call it? Uh, you know, you get like a book and it's got the paper out, out a bit. 
Yeah. What I, what, I was, what I was looking at before we went on air here was this here. I saw this scribble here. We're talking about things that were signed by people. Does that look like Mickey Dolan's signature right there? It does at the bottom. It does, actually, yeah. It's kind of weird, isn't it? Yeah. I can't make out the rest yeah. of it. it. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, that one. Well, he spent um, a lot of time in Japan, so it's entirely possible that he signed it while he was there. You've probably seen that. I couldn't too. figure out the Japanese site. You were so kind to tell me about it, and I couldn't figure out how to use it. So I just ended up giving up, which was disappointing because the Japanese stuff is amazing. The Japanese oh, books, oh, they are. They're amazing. I can, post you, I can post you the link. It's um. Oh, you did, me. and I just <laughs> and I sat and fiddled with it and went, "Oh my goodness, no! Nope, I'll leave this. I'll have to leave this stuff to Richard." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now it's basically like and then on, it's, it's 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 like eBay, but it's just um you got to sort of join it, and then you've got to um yeah. instead of instead of uh, bidding on something and then and then paying later, you've got to basically put money into into an into your account with them, and then you uh, it works out like the Australian dollar and the yen, and then whatever you, as long as you got there, there to cover it for whatever you bidding on and shipping. Um, as soon as you see something you're after, you just bid on it, but it, you know, bid on it, whatever, and then uh, we get the postage later. And and one good thing about them too, when they ship it out, it's like within a week. So mm. I'll just go quickly through a lot of the stuff that I do. These more Japanese magazines that I've got. I'll come back a bit. There we go. That's better. Ah, perfect. That's just the other. Oh, yep. Hang on. Um, That one there. Oh, Linda, I'll just. Oh, there she is. Linda's there joining us again. There oh, I am again. Great. I like that. Where's that from, Richard? That's from Japan as well. Japan. You know what year? Yep, 1960. There you go. Oops, hang on. No. You're not even on screen. Okay. <laughs> December 67. Wow. It's, it's in such a good condition too. Mm. I think Anne might have this one too. I think she's – have you got that one, Anne? No, I don't think I have that one. No, I don't think that one. There's, I've got a few of them, but no, I don't think I've got that one. Okay. Uh, there's a head program that came out. Ooh, oh, lovely. But the quality oh, wow. of the Japanese photos are just gorgeous. Oh, always amazing, the Japanese stuff. So it's when you decide to get some of that up, Richard, you just let us know and yeah, we'll be in I've, I've, got you, I've got you all in my will, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is one of the latest Ooh. ones I've got too from Japan. It's uh, like a, a Japanese special. That's that's the back or they sometimes reverse the front with the back. Well, they read back to front. So you're when you're yeah. reading... Your yeah. binder, the, the spine should be on your right side, and they read yeah. this way. Spine, yeah. Um, this one here too, the monkey's, monkey's graffiti. I've got yeah, that one. I wow. wanted that, but I couldn't figure out how to get the site to work. <laughs> I saw yeah, I've it. got that one. Uh, another another book. Good. This this one's a good one. It's just full of monkey stuff. Oh, monkey lovely. Pictures and, um, they released a lot of that in the 80s. They redid it, but, oh, that was fantastic. So this one's from 1968, 5th, the 5th of May. I think they reproduced and a lot. Yeah. It's pretty thick, too. It's like, you know, it's, yeah. it's got the, hang on. Camera there. Fantastic. Mm. Hang on, I ain't finished yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Monkey's Music Book from Japan as well. Oh, lovely. And the other Monkey's Music Book from Japan. I think we need to do an excursion to your house, Nelly, as much as we need to go to Eric's. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, when well, we go well, to the Gold Coast, you can come down and show us, or we, you know, the he, Gold he did, Coast. He, did, he, did. Yeah. He, always, he always used to say to, say to me, he said, if we combine mine with his, because he's just into, like I said, all that 
uh, toys and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm into the other side of things. So if we combine them together, just before everything. I just before I finish, I've got a couple of great ones, uh, records that I got from uh, Italy. Just hang on a sec. Well, while you're doing that, uh, we've got a couple of people uh, watching today. So I'll say hello Thank to Paula and ho hello to Helen who are watching. Oh, okay. Cool. Hello. What's that? Hold that, that in is, the day. That's the Italian version of... Um, it's just shiny because of the cover, What's, so I can't read it. Ah. Sorry. What song is that? Oh, hang on, I'll just back up a bit. It's a bit hard with this camera. No, it's just it's the glare because of the cover on the album. That's yeah, all. because of the sleeve. Right. Yeah, that's, sleeve. The, that's the original Birds of the Bees and the Monkeys from Italy. Oh, oh wow. wow. Well, Richard, if sometimes send us some of these pictures and we can put it on our Pleasant Valley Sunday uh, Facebook page for other people to have a look. Oh. Okay. Oh, what's this? Yeah. Monkeys in that's that's an Italian greatest hits from well, sort of a greatest hits. It's got like a mixture of different songs. What does that say? Um, I monkeys in TV. Yeah. So I, 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 <laughs> I, been, I been the Italian the monkeys in TV. Yeah. Now both of the both of these two records I just showed you, they're in absolute mint condition, like they've never been played. So when you pull them out, it's got the yeah, got the white inner sleeve. It's got the RCA sleeve, and it's just it's like it's just like the brand new. It's just, it's unbelievable. Oh, cool. You have so much luck. So okay, I, I found my photo, which I'm going to show, and then we'll go on to on the others. So I'll just share the screen here. Let's make sure I've got it up there. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'll just share the screen. Won't be a second. Sorry, we'll get we'll get better at this. Oh. Okay, so I'll just... I like what Linda's I'll, wearing. I do. We'll have to go into that as well. Now, okay, I'll get into this. That's what I should have done. Okay. Oh, yeah, I so, love that shirt. Oh, so what this is, is I just, I didn't know what to pick, so I actually picked a year instead. So this is from 87. Now, I don't know if people are aware, Gary Strobel did a convention, and it was called Monkey's West. But he also produced merchandise, which included a beach towel. There was a pendant. But this is, if you can see, there's also this monkey's, uh, there is the monkey's uh, patch. Uh, the pins, the badge is the only ones I've ever seen that actually when you turn it over, there is a, it has got a gold foil monkey's logo to say it's official. Oh, wow. So Tell they us, are beautiful Have you got patches. that at hand somewhere? To Sorry? Hold it? Have you got one of those to hand somewhere to show us what the no, back I put looks them, like? I actually put them away, so I'm not very organised well, today. No, I, I'll, I'll do it. I'll bring it out later. I'll go and get it once, um, once when somebody else's, and I'll go and see where I put them. And now this, he also did satin jackets. Now this one, this is unique because it's silver, and I loved it because I wore it to all the concerts. You know, being silver, you could wear it with. It felt dressed. But the actual one, when they, this is actually the prototype because when he was playing with it and I had a tour coming up, he actually rushed mine out. And so I got mine well before everybody else. Everybody else has got them, they got a pink version. So this is a prototype. And the other little thing, if you see this, this leotard thing, it's, you might remember the video, the video documentary of Heart and Soul. And at Lake Tahoe, at the last official concert in uh, 87, all the band, because David used to do his David Lee Roth, or we used to call the tiger suit, during Valerie. Oh, yeah. So I was contacted. One of the band members came up to me and said, we want to do a bit of a practical joke on the guys. And so they got, I was sort of the liaison before between the band and the, uh, and the fans. And so we all put in the money. And a girl, she was from Los Angeles, went from Tahoe right back to Los Angeles and bought all these leotards. And we got to keep them because we put the money in for them. So that's sort of a little bit, it's a different, I've got lots of stuff, but I just wanted to share something a little bit unique and it has got a connection to the monkey fandom. And uh, I'll just go back. So, sorry, I've got to get into this. So we're back, but yeah, I just wanted to show that. I'll go and get one of those pins. Yes, it's why, very 
it, I was going to say, Linda, do you, which Linda? I've got your pictures, Linda. Maybe I'll go through your pictures, Linda. Do you want me which to show some of those? About? Your collection. Me? The ones that you want to show, sure. yeah. Sure. Okay, um, so I'll go. I, I'll go I picked things, I picked a couple of, of, well, one thing that's really personal to me, um, and that is this, this little set here. Um, this... This is nothing particularly special, except it's a picture of me and Mickey at, oops, wrong way. Oh, nothing 8 special. 30, 8.30 on a Sunday morning. Um, this is me and Mickey yeah. in, in Indian Wells, Just another day, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's 8.30 in the morning. Um, and that is the day that this other bit was done. And this is really special to me because um, it was December 1990, and we were invited, a friend and I were invited out to California by someone um, to go and see Mickey play a charity polo tournament, and there's an entire story behind that which is just huge and wild and honest to goodness. Um, we came to believe it was actually a stalker of, of Mickey at the time, and I'm not exaggerating. Um, but we ended up having dinner with him, and... He explained he was playing polo the next day. Um, that picture is not from the polo match that day, but um, we promised, or I promised myself, I would not be a fan all weekend. Um, we first saw him on Saturday night, uh, sorry, Friday night, Saturday night. We had dinner, um, and Sunday we went to watch him play polo. And on Sunday morning, I finally said, "Look, I'm I'm really sorry, but I have to be a fan once this weekend." <laughs> because I will regret it forever. So may I please have a, a picture with you? Um, and he said, sure. And we took that photo. And then he signed this picture for me later on after the game. Um, and because Mickey had spent so much time the night before when I had said to him, I don't actually understand how polo works, you know, what the rules are and whatever. He explained it to me with a salt and pepper shakers, um, a set of salt and pepper shakers and two glasses of water. And I'm the glass of water, he said, and off he charged this way. And and um, by the time the game was over the next day, I completely understood what was going on. And he was really, really lovely. Um, and we spent a good couple of hours just relaxed and enjoying dinner and whatnot. And when the game was over, he had done so well um, he, that uh, he came charging over after the game and said, did you see me? Did you see me? <laughs> and grabbed me in this great big hug and lifted me off the ground. And then we went back to just being, you know, friends for the day again. And then he signed that photo for me. So that picture is really um, special to me because of that. The secret behind the photo on the right is that if he takes that jacket off, and I'm hopeful that he never actually noticed it, is he'll find my footprint on his shoulder. Uh, <laughs> and then... <laughs> And that's because we didn't know um, that on the Saturday he was dealing with a horse and it was, he called it a mucho loco horse and had to go off and deal with it and said, would you please move my car? So we got in the car, but I didn't see that his shirt was on the back seat on the floor. So when I climbed in, I actually stepped on his shirt and I tried desperately to wipe off the footprint. And I think I got most of it, but you could still see a really light, uh, light print and we just shoved it in the back and thought he'll never notice that and then of course the next day he shows up wearing it and I'm like oh my god <laughs> but that's why that's very special to me so that one means nothing to anybody else but me um, but it was an amazing weekend and I'll never forget it it was great great stuff and you've great. got some other items too I'll bring out I do have a couple one. of other little things this I just got the other day I am, was so excited by this because I was clicking through eBay and um, I just put in monkeys and this came up and it was paired up with another program to a different show that I didn't want. And I noticed that it had Davy's signature on it and it was, it was actually um, advertised as having Davy's signature. And then I saw the rest of the photos and I went, that's Mickey's signature on the inside. <laughs> so I um, I immediately went to the person selling it and said, 
look, I really don't want this other program. Do you mind? Would you split it? Because it had a buy it now price on it. And I said, would you split it? And they said, yeah, sure. And they took their listing down, split it, put this one back up and sold it to me. And I just think it's the neatest little unique, um, unique thing. It's got pictures of the, of, you know, cartoon pictures of the show in it. And then there's the, um, the bits about Davey and Mickey um, and the rest of the cast and, um, I just and all the bits about the show and all the people involved in it and I just love it for the fact that it's got Davey and Mickey and something together that's not actually about the monkeys but which is such a big part of what they did when you know when the monkeys were finished so well the funny thing is they actually did show the point on TV here and that was before of course because it's it's actually a cartoon that was yes. produced by um, Harry Nilsson there is a cartoon version but that's before they got involved of course yes. and so I'd seen that only when yeah. they started talking about it only about six months before it was shown here around Easter I believe and in the States they had a car called an arrow and they used me and my arrow as the theme for the car ad <laughs> So even before I knew about the point, I can't remember how old that was, but I was young enough that I didn't really know about the point per se, as in I hadn't seen the point, hadn't connected it with Mickey and Davey. I only knew it as a cartoon. And they were running me and my arrow for, you know, six months on the air as part of a car ad. And those two are just my, I am a lunchbox person and I would love to have one of the original originals but that's ridiculously expensive and out of my price range. So if anybody wants to adopt me and will me one of those, I'm happy with that. What, but in the meantime, I have this one? that I bought from, I bought this from Richard. <laughs> and, and I bought this one from someone overseas. Um, and it has the puzzle in it, but it doesn't have the, um, the VHS. And I'm okay with that because I, I really just wanted the lunchbox. Um, and the lunchbox has everybody on it um and i use those to hold other things you know so like this one that i got from richard which is actually smaller than i thought it was um but and, and smaller than the other one um but this one holds the trading cards that i currently own i'm still looking for a set but um well i know where they are but right now i'm trying to behave but that's not going to last terribly long did it, did, it, did it arrive did it arrive safely no scratches or dents because it was no nothing good. no scratches no dents went to my p.o box and straight in if you'd like to test that again please do uh but <laughs> it, you know but it was it was great and so i'm like i'm a lunchbox kind of a gal not everything um you know i don't collect everything but there are some things that you know like i know um, there's a wonderful woman overseas, and I don't know how to say her name. Is it Jada or Jada? Um, Jada, Dixon. I think it is. Jada. She has, you know, she's like, here's what I found today. And there were like six different copies of Last Train to Clarksville. And I said, tell me what's, why do we have them? And she said, oh, they're all a little bit different. And I found like a tiny little difference here and a tiny little difference there. And as a completist collector, that is an awesome thing to do. I'm not that person. Okay, I'd like to just, uh, I was going to say, we've had... Linda, sorry, Linda Reed. Yeah. Yeah. I still, I still got it. Uh, I was just going to say, we've got uh, people watching today. I'll, and I'll we've bring got you down a, with the next convention, okay? Yeah. Nice. Oh, I've got, Richard, I've got a Missouri. She's Japanese and she's so impressed because she's not seen a lot of the stuff you've shown. Oh, wow. Sorry, what was that? We had a, we've got a a Japanese uh, fan watching, and she was very impressed uh, that she, there's stuff that you had that she's never seen before. Oh wow! And we also got that Susan Veach, best wishes from Sunbury, and uh, we got, yeah, so we've got some yeah, great I'll people see, here. Still asleep, I think. So <laughs> we'll get people uh, in the UK and in Japan. I, I haven't even started on the Japanese stuff. I've got I've got tons of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to see Linda's. I I love what Linda's got, and we have to get Linda. Oh yes, yes, Linda. Yes, it's your Linda. turn, and it's I'll bring up the photo in a moment. So, well, yeah, you you should talk about your thing, Lin Linda. Your little okay. collectible. Her amazing thing. Um. Well, I actually found it. I didn't think I. 
most of my collection is in boxes at the moment because I haven't got a room set up to display things. Um, but my pride and joy is my little original JC Penny's monkey's hat, um, which I got a couple of years ago. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm not very tech savvy, so if I flash things that shouldn't be flashed, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> you do like That's a whole different live stream. <laughs> um, this morning I went to one of the local markets and I was very lucky to pick up some Richard tells me that their original promo photos. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. The, well, not original the, um, promo. I think they're just promo photos from the pilot episode. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if they're original. They could be. I, I can't tell you, but I, I, all I know is that they're all, all taken from the, show, uh, the the pilot show. But yeah, they look yeah. they look very impressive. Yeah, yeah. Anytime they're, you find something monkey somewhere, it's impressive. Now I think. Yeah, no, knowing I how hard it is know. in Australia. What's that? I don't know if you can see Sorry. this. It's a um. Canvas. Hold it up higher, Linda. There you go. Perfect. Um, what is that? It's a canvas print of the group and it's signed by Mickey. Wow. wow. Where'd you get that? I uh, got that back in the 80s. Wow. Fantastic. Nice. So, Good photo, too. Oh, look at that hat. Yeah, that's my Will pride and joy. Is it going to be making an appearance on the Gold Coast like it did in Melbourne? It will, yep. Um, I I know a lot of people have got this. I'll try, try and do it this way. Um, Love the shirt. My, my album... For, um, I can't thank Jody enough for the trouble that she went to to get this signed for the, for me by the guys um, because it was a long story. So, but um, very very proud owner. Uh, that's it's amazing, Linda. Personally signed. Fantastic. Um, well, we got. I just and, say. Um, I just quickly welcome Eric. He's just joined our stream. So hey, we'll Eric. Get to him. Hey, 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 guys. Hey. And lastly, just one of the things I've got is my dressing gown. Ooh, oh, yeah. Nice. Hey, I still have to give you money and have you send me my goodies. <laughs> I've got to that get off my bottom and get them sent up. But, um, yeah, my dressing gown, which I got. Also back in the 80s. Wow. So. See, I left and then, like, um, what was it, Spencer's put all this stuff out after I left the country. Yeah. So I was um, quite, a lot of it there was in the late 90s because 86, they, sorry, 96, they released a lot of stuff. I was there, but it came out after the tour, you know, it came out in the yeah. uh, gate leading up to Christmas. I well, do thank have you, Linda. One Love item. your T-shirt. Yeah. I do have one item that I've, I've shown somewhere and I can't dig it out now because it would be almost impossible for me to dig it out of the box without well, creating a... That's all right. It's Next a, time. <laughs> it's, a, it's a visa receipt that belongs to Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> so I know his credit card number. Um, a friend of mine was working at Brookstone, which is a was a big gift store like Spencer's in the States, but it had neat stuff like... Um, he, he bought um, some weird little electronic thing. It, it's one of those stores where you have to write down what you want and they'll go in the back and get the stuff and whatever. And he bought a big sundial, which is probably still sitting in his garden. And and he left the store and my friend who worked there stole the receipts. Oh, my God. And said, here, I got this for you. So she said, I don't think he's ever actually been charged for it because I stole the receipt. <laughs> But I've got his pick list and his visa receipt. So, <laughs> and you'll get the FBI 
knocking on your door tomorrow morning after this is gone every day. <laughs> but it was, it was 33 years ago now, so, you know, I'm probably safe. <laughs> but if you have a sundial Mickey Dolans that says, you know, the best is yet to be from Elizabeth Barrett Browning, my friend is responsible for you not paying for that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're just sharing some of our chats today. So, uh, you know, this is a good thing about doing live. We can have people, oh, nice. uh, yeah, they can, you can contribute and I'll, we'll put all the things in. So, must, must yeah. Be yeah, I think it's Eric's turn. It's the big finale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Eric, Eric, we all went one first, first, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So are we Eric, thinking, we want we're thinking one favourite favorite thing, are we? Yeah. Well, well we, we want to see your you favourite piece and we want to see your rarest piece. Oh, okay. Um, uh, Just show us the room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, okay. we could be here for days. Oh, yeah, that's rare. <laughs> that's... Yeah, that's pretty rare. It's uh, it's really minty fresh. I don't think it's ever been used. So I'll take that as my rare piece. God, I'll try to get yeah. it in the frame. Fresh is best. What mate. Fresh child is best. gets a pencil case and doesn't use it? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and that is my favourite piece. The one in the middle. Which is my or the one Blade Monkey Mobile. Yeah, that was one of my very. That's first my favourite piece. piece. That I've seen that on eBay. I've got a few favorite pieces, but sorry, uh, one changes. I've seen that on eBay recently, and it wasn't cheap. No. No. Well, yeah, they sure vary in price. That's for sure. Yeah. Mm. Well, what about that prototype lunchbox that's being talked about at the moment? Yeah. The oh, geez, box? that's got plenty of. Yeah. I mean, I'm very I'd skeptical love it on that. Hundred bucks for it, you know. It does look it. Uh, it does look like it's an original. If you look at it, you can see where it does look worn from that time. And as uh, Ed Riley said, it could possibly be, you know, an original. It could be a prototype because I have heard of that myself. I'll have a look for it and we'll see if we can share it to our screen. The, but if, I'll tell you what, the graphic yeah. designers these days have got something to answer for. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you look at the, you look at the writing on the side. There it looks like it's half like. Faded, I like to try to respray it back on. I don't know. I'm still, you know, about it. Without him yeah. being able to say for sure that's what it is, I think if it's a bit of a cheek for the starting price. Until it, until oh, it's proven, right. until it's proven that it is. I mean, I wouldn't go. Yes. Hey, mate, there's eight hundred bucks. No way. Yeah, no. And that's eight hundred American. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. Well, that's for us dollars. Australians. Yeah. My point is there's a lot of a lot of experts and a lot of fans out there and no one has ever seen it before. That makes well, me skeptical I'm, straight away. I'm well, sure see, I'm okay with that because a prototype you wouldn't necessarily see before. And Andrew Sandoval said No, something. but you would have heard of it though. Short sure, one of us would no, have heard no. of it before. Yeah. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure yeah. I've Not seen necessarily. that. I'm sure I've seen something like that or very close to that on eBay a few years ago and I'm and and we all had, I think someone had a discussion about it and they said, no, this is just, someone's just painted over it. They've done this and done that. But no, this no, one looks a little bit different. It but, mm. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to tell. So. Mind you, Andrew Without Sandoval verification, said you wouldn't spend that much. Exactly. That's what I said. I think Andrew yeah. Sandoval said it just right, too. We are going to start to see as people pass away, as people fade from being major collectors or their families are going through their stuff or whatever we're going to start to see stuff that we don't know about because Oops. unless we were there for That's everything very valid that point. prepared in the beginning, you know, mm. it's we're not going to have the opportunity to that know is. what these things are about. That looks pretty spot on. Like, I mean, it, it had taken an awful lot for someone to fake that. Let's Yeah, it would be. It that way. It's, it's an awful lot of work to fake something like that. And when you look at the side and you see the Raybert Productions, you just yeah. go. You know what? I don't know that a uh, I don't know that a fake would even think of doing that. No, I think. Well, it's got there's, too much there's a trouble. member in the marketplace, Scott Buckworld, his name is, who does all yeah. repo stuff. Yeah, he said he could right. do that spot on. Oh, yeah. okay. He but, said he could you know, replicate that, fine. no problems. Also, but I don't know. You know, I don't know well, that. The but he's a graphic designer, good. though. Also, if you look where the, where the thermos mark is on, on top of the lid there, you can see a little spot of white as if it's, 
Like I, I, it's almost like if you scratch the yellow off, you'll see the white original white vinyl. On the <laughs> yeah. Well, see for me that the the vinyl won't won't it will be paint quote unquote painted but painted vinyl because the vinyl will automatically have been white and they've layered it to give it a yellow color i actually of the and and i'm not completely knowledgeable here but i'm of the opinion that this is real i think so too because for somebody to put the work in it that would be hours it'd be worth the 800 dollars if they did the work for it because mm. it would take and the wear and funny amount. places and you know the way it's curled in certain places. Why would you go when a when an original one? You know when when one that we all know about the white one. Yep. Um, yeah. is so valuable, and people are paying ridiculous prices for them. Why would they bother to do this? The only thing that why makes me think, the only thing that makes me think it could be real is if you go back where the, on the side where the studs are, where there's like the little round studs on the side, mm -hmm. and you got a little bit of rust on them, but you can see where it's. Um, yeah, like you can see where the outline still it looks like real, like 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 the original one does, like the one we all yeah, made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, you look at the and studs there. They, 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 that's the only part that makes me think it could be real. Well, and look at the front. If you go back to the front and you see the boys' faces, how yeah. the see? Look at Mickey's face, and part of it's yellow. Yeah, yeah. and yellow on Mike's face and on his hands. That yeah. happens when something's not complete and when it's prototype. Yeah. So yeah. you know, if it was a if it was a perfect print, like look at the the monkey's logo is pretty spot on, but that's every that was always used. So it's got a mark or two on it, I think, from age. But when you look at the you know when something's printed on and they're just testing it, sometimes the yellow will come in the wrong that other color will come in the wrong place. So, yeah, I mean, and see up the white above Mike's head. And the white above Mickey's head mean that yeah. it was supposed to go in this spot, and it's actually ended up in a slightly different spot. Ah, yeah, that's I a very good pickup. That, that those yeah. are that those are things to me that say that's real. Mm. Because if, if you had a fake one, they'd be doing their damnedest to make it look as perfect as they can, and this isn't exactly. Perfect. Was it was no, this a buy it now? Is it on a bit like eight eight hundred dollars starting? It's an bit? auction. It was an auction. Mm. But it, you know, um, yeah, it goes for. Did everyone see the beach bag that was uh, for sale in the UK? No, no. no. That yeah, you saw it, Richard. You showed it to me. The what was it the beach bag? Original monkey '67, the Vaughan wow. bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago. Sorry, yeah. I I've only ever seen one in the book before. I think it was from England. Wow. Yeah, and what did that go for? Rich, incredible money, didn't it? It went for 500 US, yeah. Good wow. yeah. yeah. I just want the money these well, people have, and then I'll choose what to spend it on. You know, yeah. I don't know how people do it. Like, they must not have, they must not have family, mortgages, rent. You know? <laughs> Somebody's yeah. left them a lot of money, you know. <laughs> Yeah. It really just makes me sad because I see yours. things I can't have. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I myself am deeply jealous. Aren't we all? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm a little more jealous than I reckon you would be. <laughs> and, a, and a lot more jealous than Eric would be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I've had it? my stuff all my life, yeah. so I'm just so used to having it. It's yeah, it's part of me now. Yeah. There's always I'm one there's always something forever. that people there's always something that fans crave all the time there's more stuff out there that you you know you think like some people have this amount some people have this amount eric's got this amount <laughs> but we're, we're all still craving that or chasing that, that particular item or items or whatever it's like eric said the thrill of the hunt it's always out there you you know yeah. depends on what you're after what you what you like what you're into that kind of thing as well so did you see the motorized monkey mobile little short video that was posted on the marketplace? Yeah, that was that one from oh, Japan, that's... Eric. Yeah, mm. but I've never well, seen it motorized. That, that really surprised me. Oh. Well, I didn't yeah. know it was motorized. I, th I thought it was just a, the old plastic model, but the Japanese version of it. And that's the one I sent to you in three messages. You said, check this out. Yeah. yeah. But I, yeah, I didn't know it was motorized. It was pretty cool. No. 
Not a surprise, yeah. Missed it by that much, Rich. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> only, by five, only by 500 yen, my friend. <laughs> yeah, like you say, mate, it's the thrill of the hunt. It always is, isn't yeah. it? Hey, Eric, I have a question for you. Yeah. What are you still looking for? What one thing are you still really looking for? Well, that beach bag, that would have been incredible when I was watching it. But, yeah, my pockets have, they're, they're not that deep. But, yes, that and the drum kit that Jada managed to score, yeah. that is my holy grail. Oh, that looks awesome. Mm. I actually won one of those drum kits on eBay. I was the winning bidder, and the guy wouldn't honour it and wouldn't post to Australia. I offered to pay all expenses, and he just oh, wouldn't wow. ship. So, so close, but yet I, so far. But that is my holy grail. That drum kit would be brilliant. It would fit right in there. But what if about you were you paying it, everything, why? Did he not want to that? Oh, yeah, I don't know. Like People can be just funny. If you were getting lost ahead. in post, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, you me. Like, I've I've had things sent to friends and I've done that, but you do get one. I had a guy the other day with a comic and he cancelled it because oh, I saw you're from overseas. I said, well, I was going to give you another address, and then he said, oh, okay, and I said, no, just forget it. it was, you know, I didn't really. I thought you're not going to. Uh, you're going to without asking me. You cancelled the auction. I think. Well, no, that's not good enough. No. Yeah. I know. Sometimes it sucks living in Australia, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. But you know, that's the thing. Well, we've got very passionate fans here. Now, we, maybe we'll get, bring this to a close shortly, and we can do another one. So we'll have that's more stuff. I'm sure we can find. <laughs> that was not my dog. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's what Wally. Uh, um, that's Eric's Wally. Just, yeah. I was going to say Eric just answered. What would you like? So let's tell me. What would you? What was your dream? I would love a thermos, a thermos or a lunchbox. I actually have a spare thermos, so. <laughs> Name your price, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> it, hasn't got the cup. it hasn't got the cup, but I've got a spare thermos. I've got two th Girls, they, thermos. You take one. after pay. <laughs> and, I've got those, and I've also got those monkey bobbleheads that are spare as well. I picked those up, so. So there's those. I, by myself, you know what I've always liked? You know, it's those monkey hangers. I saw oh, them yeah. years ago, and I I don't know, it's just the things that I've always loved. I know, yeah. and the belt yeah. buckles, because it was one of those things that I went looking at the op shops when I was in the 80s, was trying to find a monkey's belt buckle. So uh, who else we got? Richard, what are you, what's your holy grail? Holy grail? Yeah, for monkeys. What would you like? I suppose some really? of the things you actually had to sell, I suppose. Well, actually, there's a couple of there was a couple of records I was chasing that I missed out. I missed it. I was, I'm oh, yes, Linda. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm, still trying to chase, I'm still trying to chase that steam yes. engine single from Relive Records that Chip Douglas put out. Oh yes, I got that somewhere. I, ha I had um, I had a copy of it years ago, but I sold it, which I regret now. Um, there's also the Michael Nesmith. Uh, Very nice, Linda. Oh, the Michael well, Nesmith album, Which of the Train Whistle Sings from Japan, which is a different cover. Wow. Um, that's another thing I'm chasing. Um, that's why, just start to interrupt. I wonder what anybody train whistle sings in our chat. Promo. Okay, sorry, just interrupt. But anybody in our chat, if you're listening, what would you like? What is your to And we can read them out. So yeah, we'll go back. Sorry. Yeah, let us know what you're looking for. Yeah. So. Sorry, who's next? Linda, what are you looking for? Same holy grail as Eric, but also um, original clothing, the, the jeans, the the shirt, the pantyhose. Eric, if it, remember, <laughs> adopted sister here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, just for anybody listening, that, there was actually that a set of pantyhose. That totally blows my mind. That Some really reason. blows my mind that they had monkey stockings. Some people had yeah, stockings. I, and I think only in Australia because I don't think we've heard anybody. Have you, Eric, heard anybody overseas having the monkey stockings or is it just here? No, no. It must have been an Australian exclusive. Wow. Yep. My, my yep. plastic is not so crisp. It's a bit because I used to take it from convention to convention, so it's looking a bit battered. <laughs> It's like those Coca-Cola tops that Eric spot on eBay 
with Channel oh, 7 yeah. on the side of it. Yes. Who would have thought oh, about that? Who would have thought that way. existed? Oh, Don't you hate that? I looked that at him. I saw him. I thought about it. Yep, I'm going to buy him. By then it was too late. Oh. You can't hesitate. That's the biggest mistake you can make is hesitating. Yeah. yeah. And you know what? You think I'd learn that by now, wouldn't you? But no. <laughs> it's why it's when trying to tease you. When you see on, <laughs> on on Facebook and there's different ones and they'll start asking questions. I, if I want it, I just say, I want it. I won't muck yeah. around asking questions because while you're waiting, somebody else could buy it. And it's happened. Um, I was talking to my sister about yeah. the other day. We bought some Disney purses and they were really good special and you know why others are turning around oh can you send me pictures you know i want to see which one i would like because you had a variety and it's like you've got to say yes i want it and that's it's it fine. you can't yeah you can't spend time i see paul has sent a message i'm hoping to find a birds the bees and monkeys deluxe handmade yeah. cd one day does that exist it does doesn't it They're right there by the looks of it <laughs> yeah, i haven't got that either I was going to say, deluxe. ask Richard, hit that one. Yeah. <laughs> the only deluxe I have is present. Yeah, I, I don't have that. any of them. Hmm. Sorry? I, that Richard, was, you should yeah. have done that with like this saying, and here's one I pres arranged earlier. Here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be, I'll, be so happy. I'll be collecting these since then. Andrew's handover will put them out through the Rhino Handmade. Mm -hmm. I've even got the headquarters sessions, and then I got this, and then they start through head instrument play presence and then went back to the original album then more of the monkey so i've got i've got the whole set yeah wow i haven't got and any thing, of those and the thing is i always said if you when they was putting these out at the time you could, i mean they were selling these for like 60 to 80 dollars i think us at the time when they first came out jump straight on right there while you can because yeah. people when, once they're out of print and they go on ebay they go for like crazy prices so mm -hmm. And well, that's why that um, original album LP is coming out again soon, next month, mm -hmm. I think. And people are going, oh. Oh, the it? yellow vine, yeah, there's like the, the yellow same vinyl. yellow vine, yeah. yeah. And I snatched it instantly and just, and same thing with Andrew's book, Super Deluxe, which is ridiculous when it, when you convert same it. Same here. Into yep. Australian yep. dollars. Yeah. So I just thought, you know what? Never going to see it again. And he's absolutely right. As soon as it's done, the prices it's are going to be um, plus, yeah. plus, yeah, plus, plus, there's going to be some bonus goodies or, or a goodie that he's going to throw in there with it as well. Well, he said yeah. that he took out like 30 pages of photos, and the Super Deluxe has a book that's about 30 pages of photos. So my guess is that it's, everything it's like a phone book size, yeah. version mm -hmm. is now the yeah. extra on the Super Deluxe. Version. Maybe we can do one of our live streams when you because I just got the standard one because oh. I would have needed to sell a kidney to get the super deluxe and I don't yes. really want my kidney. Yes. So I've gone for the yep. standard, but I figured it'd be great to do a live stream when you guys get it, open it live. Show us what's yes. inside. Yeah. We'll, we'll we'll definitely we'll yeah. definitely have a discussion on it. That's one of the things we want to plan. We actually have a book club ID coming up so we can, you know, like review it all together, what we thought in the different versions. And uh, we can discuss other books as well. Oh, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Linda, we, I think we've gone through everybody what their holy grail is. Well, we're getting into now, I think we'll, we, we'll close shortly. So uh, any comments, if anybody else has got, uh, wants to make a comment before we go? I'd Anybody love to hear up? Eric's story about how he got started as a collector. My... He missed oh, yeah, start. good idea, yes. Yeah. Oh. How I got started? Yes. Oh, jeez, I was just a little boy that loved the show, that loved the music, that got little bits and pieces along the way and just kept collecting and collecting and Smart enough here not I am. to give yeah, it got... away, huh? Yes. No, Smart no, enough it's, enough it's, it away. it's actually in my will to be donated, donated to a museum. It's not oh, to be separated. You know. No. <laughs> 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 no, no I'm say it. <laughs> we're, we're running that museum, aren't we? Haven't we all pitched yeah. in to be part of the committee? Yeah. Well. <laughs> no, we're, we're, no us, us are the four, four guys here. We, we're going to go and get a uh, legal will drill, uh, drawn up and get Eric to sign when he's not looking. Like, well, when he's not looking, <laughs> what it is. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it appears I've got a big collection. I probably have, but it's not like I've amassed it in 12 months. It's... It's taken me my whole life to get to where I've got. And luckily, when I started, things were cheap. 
things. Yeah. Like that. yeah. You know, that yeah. pencil case, I think, cost me 80 Australian dollars or something back then. I've got, but I then got we, a thought that was, we thought that was dear at the time. Never thought well, of that's right. it now. That's yeah. right. Yeah, I have got a spreadsheet with everything that I've brought, what I've actually paid for, but in my like, the coat hanger set, I think it was 150 Australian dollars for the whole set. That's pretty good. That it's, is very good. Yeah. You know, yeah. but back in the days, just just interest has seemed to keep going and going with the monkeys. Things just seem to be going up and up and up. But you've well, never really find things in Australia too. Like it is. compare it to the eighties and nineties, it's so hard to find. Like if I see something on Facebook market page, it's like a miracle because it's so rare now to find things that we don't already have yeah. from our earlier days of collecting. Mm. Exactly. See, I'm good with that because I don't have a lot of the Australian stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so for me, I know that's pretty really popular with you girls, isn't it? Up. I know. I like yeah. that one. I got it at the oh, time. The I did buy that at the time. See, I want that so bad. I want yeah. that. I have that. So bad. I want that so bad. That is one of I the things. I could see that in one of these women's dressing tables with all your little bits of jewelry yeah. in it. That's what it is, isn't no, it? It's a trigger box. Mine's still in the box. Yes. Yeah. In the box. You know, that is, that is <laughs> one of my holy grails is that trinket box. But, you know, I see it online and what it goes for in the end is ridiculous to what my budget can handle at the moment. And Unfortunately, so, Linda, it's not the it's the postage that kills things, isn't it? It's the well, that's postage. It. It's not the price Ooh, of the that, thing. It's that's the, a, you know, here you pay thirty dollars for this or fifty dollars, say fifty dollars Australian for that, which I think there was one online like that recently. But the postage is forty dollars. And then you get the import charges these days as well. Throw in the import yeah. charge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so so about four or five dollars on top of that. You know, um, know when I'm planning to go overseas and then I'll tell you guys and I'll bring an empty because I do have family there. And I'll, when I have an idea of when I'm going, I will ship stuff to my mother and sister's house and then say, OK, guys, ship your stuff here. And when I come home, it'll all come with me in a suitcase, you know, <laughs> because that's it's cheaper to fly over there and come back than it is to buy some of the some of the I stuff for the, for the shipping. Absolutely. The dollar, the dollar I, I find fluctuate, fluctuate, we, the I was going to say, what well, we, we do, my sister and I, because she collects a lot of stuff, we actually have a post box hmm. in America and then they combine. And surprising, you know, okay, it might cost you $300 yeah. to send it out here, but you might have eight items in that parcel. So it's, and also too, with some of the things, like we got the book sent out, if you're getting the book sent here, you've got to pay the GST on a lot, depending on the way they're doing it. You know, if you get anything, that's the thing with eBay at the moment. You pay the GST, but you're not paying the GST with the postage all the way to Australia. So it makes it a little bit cheaper because that's mm. actually what's, what's getting now. You go and you get a, I got a monkey's folder a few weeks ago and then you think, oh, I've got a good prize. And then they put the GST or the sales tax in America on it and mm -hmm. you sort of lost that amount. So, well, I think we'll, we'll call it a night. But I, just I think say one, I was just going to say one yeah. thing. Um, when, when I've been getting stuff from Europe, it's like okay, I get stuff from Germany, Italy, whatever. Um, yeah, they've got different postage rates, and, and some of them are ridiculous, yeah. and some of them like like you know acceptable. It's like why you're all from Europe? What's the difference? Well, I can tell you. I, 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 I hear you. Well, Blame it on the COVID, okay. they reckon. Blame it on the COVID. You know, you got to add this no. extra, this and extra for that. I can yeah, tell well, you, cool. in London. I have to send things from London. London's expensive. But you can get a box in, say, in France, and you can just pack it as long as it's got seven kilos. It, it has a max price. So there is ways of doing it cheaper from different places. Ireland's not bad either, but England, they, yeah, they've got their own system. So it yeah. just depends. But, yeah, the only thing is, like, when you go to America these days, look, I've been to America many times, and I've been to lots of antique malls. There rarely is any monkey stuff. You can walk in there and you'll find beetles you'll find elvis monkey stuff is rare you just it's very hard to even go into a, a uh collector store they actually told me the best in the 80s the best place to get monkeys merchandise was at a beetle fest that's where you bought it from and the wow. monkey conventions because it just wasn't something you could you don't see it it's just not there yeah. And, and it shows that people are holding on to their stuff, whereas yeah. a lot of the people's stuff now, there was so much of it and whatnot, people have stopped slowly moved out of it or whatever. And, uh, and 
that stuff is out available. You don't find a monkey in your pocket not because there isn't any that exists. It's because nobody's letting it go. I mean, because let's yeah. face it, out of all the bands out there that have lasted this long in the public consciousness, not many of them are still doing concerts, albums, no. you know, meet and greets, mer new merchandise. How many, you know, when's the last time you saw a new Beatles album? When's the last time yeah. you saw, you know, a new Rolling Stone tour? You know, those these these bands still exist, but they exist because the music that they had then, and like say with the Rolling Stones, even into the 80s, for instance, that was their era, and they're still good and lasting for their music has lasted. But within that era, it has lasted in our consciousness. Whereas the monkeys, we've got music in the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s. You know, we've, you know, they've just continued and continued and continued. So they keep picking up new fans. So instead of selling their stuff, older fans are handing it down to newer fans. So it's leaving less for us. Mm, yeah. Less for Before to find in the shops. I'd just like to ask yeah. anybody watching if there's any questions I'd like to ask our panel and we'll be finishing in about, so if you want to put it up, um, maybe in the next two minutes and we'll just, uh, <laughs> our final, final. Now we're all looking forward to the book, which is good. So has everybody ordered a copy? Yep. Oh yeah. yeah. No, I have not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Not. really? I don't believe you. You, I have so many books here on the monkeys, and I don't think I've I've, I've read a few, but yeah, um, nah, I'm, I'm keeping my money for something. Have you got well, Andrew's first book, Eric? Yes, I have. Yes. Okay. See, I don't. I think and I this is the updated version. version. Yeah. Yeah, I have it. I think I was in just happened to be in Hawaii at the time. Walked into a bookstore and there was two copies there. So thank you. You know, these are the things that happen. Because you, you very rarely find monkey stuff. It just I just love going to Hawaii and I'd get the eight tracks there, but and you'd find some variations in the records. But you, you'd really never found it's very rarely you found monkey actually good monkey quality stuff. It's very. I know, isn't it amazing if you're at a fair and you see anything monkeys, no matter how trivial it is. You get yeah. excited because, my God, there's something monkeys. Yeah. Well, I did that the other day. I went to a antique mall and they had uh, Monkey Mania and they had a single. And it's been so long since I've seen a single. I think it was she that I went and bought it because I just hadn't seen it for so long in a store. That's right. Was, That's my point. Yep. Yeah. I want to say that I did go to Cash Converters and bought the bubble heads, but I thought, look, I'm sure somebody will love those. I'd rather, you know, and – you know, I have done that, but you don't get very often can you walk into a store and see monkeys. No, oh, yeah. definitely not. And even when the right. Spencer stuff, I used to go I used to go to Spencer's and I still do at times, but they were never where the monkey stuff was there. I had to buy it from overseas and get it shipped, even shipped to friends because it was just so expensive, the postage. Yeah. And it's even got worse. Well, I don't think we've got any questions on, so does anybody who wants to sort of finish off or... I'm just going to put it out there that I'm available for adoption for anyone that does have spare stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. just going to put it out there that we've got, got a question for you, so. i got a question yeah. for you all, and this is a bit morbid, but when your time has come and you're no longer here, what do you want your families to do with your collections that you put so much time and effort into? Because if I saw my stuff end up at op shops, I would probably come back and haunt them. But that's just me. <laughs> I think I that's, well, that's why I said earlier, to yeah. my mind's not to be separated. There's no way my lot is getting sold. It's been donated and it's going to stay in one lot and the legacy is going to live on. That's, that's, that's my collection. Who's next? Your house is going to end up being the museum. Whatever happens, yeah. to me, whatever happens to me, you want to make sure you guys are right there standing at my door knocking and start collecting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was actually going to approach. Sorry? <laughs> I was going to approach Richard and Eric and ask them if I could put them in my will to be executives of my monkeys collection. Wow. Because <laughs> like you well, guys, if, if um, it went to an op shop, which 
my children uh, most likely would do, mm -hmm. I would sit and howl. <laughs> yeah, because you know what, Linda, your your Braxton shirt or whatever, op shop probably give them ten dollars for it. No one knows the real value except monkeys fans. Exactly that's right. right. I mean, that's yeah, sure. if, if someone didn't know anything about anything and night and they found all my stuff, they'd just go, oh, and, you know, they wouldn't even know the prices. They wouldn't know anything. It's like you don't know where where it would end up, really. So no, no, that's right. That's right. Only mm. true fans know the the true value of things. That's for sure. Yeah. And then, yeah, because look at the value they put on those some of those items. I mean, absolutely ridiculous sometimes. I think there was that television book. And what was it? They wanted four or $500 for it. Well, it certainly wasn't worth that value. So no. beyond, they're sometimes beyond what even monkey fans would pay. Well, I'd like to thank all our panellists and uh, for all coming, Tammy, Linda, Eric, Linda and Richard, thank you. And if anybody, if you Still like what we do here... Specs. <laughs> We're getting ready for next You're welcome. Year. Thank you. Good night for coming. Ready for next Thanks, year. Come join us on the Gold Coast. If you like, next if you like what we do, uh, please share share with you on our this page or this video. And we'll, if you like our content, we'll do more. And uh, it's just the start. So if you've got ideas of what we can cover, please let us know. And uh, thank you for watching. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.